Now, would you believe it's been a year since plans to house 2,000 asylum seekers at RAF Scampton were leaked to the press as the Home Office tried to reduce reliance on expensive hotels. And since then, West Lindsay District Council and community groups have fought to prevent progress at the historic site, which they say puts a £300 million regeneration at risk. And now, despite the High Court ruling that government plans are lawful, the people of Scampton are once again preparing to fight. Our East Midlands reporter, Will Hollis, has the story for you. Save our Scampton! Save our Scampton! For a year now, the future of Britain's most iconic airbase has been in doubt. A £300 million regeneration deal at risk. Sarah Carter is from the Save Our Scampton campaign. People are really worried and they feel like they haven't got a voice because the Home Office keeps saying we're engaging with the locals, but they're not. One year ago, media reports began to circulate that thousands of asylum seekers would be coming to Scampton. This led Gainsborough MP Sir Edward Lee to raise the issue in Parliament. West Lindsay District Council has not still been informed officially that the Home Office is planning to place migrants in RAF Scampton. Months of protests and a spate of police incidents punctuated a difficult year for the tiny community. 2023 ended with the council losing a judicial review, the High Court ruling Home Office plans are lawful. Few airbases hold the prestige of Scampton, the men of 617 Squadron flew the daring Dambuster raids from its runway during the Second World War. They are sure to be remembered in all histories of the war. Now West Lindsay is preparing a new legal challenge as the Home Office pushes to secure the site for three more years. There's porter cabins that have just been stuck there for months on end. Councillor Roger Patterson represents Scampton at West Lindsay. Unless there's a compromise or unless they back down, we have no future. So it's complete and utter despair. A Home Office spokesperson said, We understand the concerns of local communities and are liaising with councils and local services to manage the impact of using these sites on a temporary basis. A year on, and the Home Office vision for Scampton is in limbo. The persistent council here in West Lindsay is hoping planning law can prevent any further progress. Meanwhile, a defiant community says they'll continue to protest even if legal challenges fail. Not a single asylum seeker has moved into Scampton. I don't believe they'll ever get here. Um, we, we're trying damn hard to make sure it doesn't happen. The community is dug in deep. Will Hollis, GB News in Scampton. Scampton being a limbo. Is that how you see it? Well, let's ask human rights lawyer Shweb Khan, who joins me now. A very good morning to you. It seems that um, anything the government tries to do ends up being in limbo. How do you see things ending up? Hi, good morning. Um, yes, I mean, I think that's the problem here, isn't it? Um, and already we've seen, um, obviously, like you said, it's been a year since the plans were leaked. Um, there's already been a judicial review. Um, you know, more legal action has been contemplated. I mean, on both sides, really, either sides from the government, um, in terms of public consultations, the legal action, the planning there, um, you know, it's just hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds of taxpayer money being spent. And like we just said, not a single asylum seeker has been sent there. I mean, you know, it's obviously um, probably, you know, comparable to, for instance, the Rwanda scheme, so many other schemes where the government comes up with these ideas, then spends years fighting them through courts, um, and very few of them actually materialize. Um, and, and we, you know, so that, that's it. It is a complete waste of money um, going through things without actually having any legal recourse, without having the legal grounds in place beforehand to ensure people that what they're doing is lawful. But something's got to happen in the end, hasn't it? I mean, I, I don't know what it's like for you at the moment being described as a human rights lawyer, because some people will see you as the problem. Every time the government tries to put asylum seekers anywhere, um, it seems that their human rights trump the human rights of people who object. 
I mean, well, it depends what you mean by where. I mean, obviously, it depends where they're being put. The point is, you know, if by being put we mean they're being put in Rwanda, then of course, yes. Um, you know, I think anyone who understands the implications of that understands the situation. Has ever met or spoken to an asylum seeker, understood their problems, their situation, why and how they're in the UK, would object to that. Um, but even in terms of this, you know, we're using these RAF bases. We, we previously used former army barracks, all kinds of situations. The point is, um, you know, even if we do keep someone there for six months, a year and so on, um, at some point we have to, you know, let's just say let them out, let them into the wider community. And that's when these problems happen because they've been locked up for so long. They don't have access to the wider community, wider facilities. They've not been allowed to integrate within the society. And then the asylum seekers are the ones who get criticized for that. How are they supposed to learn English? How are they supposed to learn the British way of life? If what we're doing is the first six months or year or two years um, of their time in the UK, they're being locked up somewhere separately. They're the ones, you know, the, the, the government, you know, parts of the media, politicians blame asylum seekers for ghettos, segregation. They don't want to mingle. How, how on earth are they supposed to mingle? They're being locked up or even if not locked up, but basically with almost no money, no proper transport links being sent to these, um, uh, former army barracks or RAF bases. How on earth are they going to be allowed to mingle? They have their own doctors, their own facilities. They, they just don't share facilities with anyone. But in terms of a solution or in terms of the main point is, yes, I mean, just like we do with other population, other people are already here. Some of them, you know, health problems, other problems, they have to be um, supported by the government or the taxpayer, you know, through um, whether it's local government or national government, of course, for some people. But like the rest of us do, so many of us, the vast majority of us, we go out and we earn a living. Why are these people not allowed to do that? They are not allowed to work in the UK, so, so many of them. Um, of course, and I know I get, uh, you know, criticized for saying things like this all the time because then people say, well, all of them aren't, you know, educated, all of them aren't qualified, but so many of them are. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had refugees just in the past um, few years from uh, Ukraine, Afghanistan, um, you know, sadly, it's probably going to be lots of Palestinians coming up, so many other countries. So obviously in those countries, we do have doctors, we have engineers, we have people you know, doing all sorts of work, all sorts of qualifications they can bring over. Um, so many of them should be allowed, you know, would be able to take on um, proper work, actually pay taxes. And well, I think that's said, the it, biggest it problem us, here. It brings us back to that term limbo, doesn't it? It's uh, Limbo is, was never a good place for any human being to be. Shoaib, thanks you very much for joining me this morning.